Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon, and welcome back to Orangeburg Touchdown Club 2020. Uh, we're so fortunate to be with you, and thank you so much to the sponsors, the T&D, for all they do to make this happen. Uh, for some of us, it was a tough weekend last weekend, but for others, it was a great weekend, and uh, the football was great. Uh, in addition to that, I, I want to thank uh, Coach Willie for allowing me to play his golf tournament last week. I, I had a great time. There's my emblem I got. I, I did not come in last. And I also had the good fortune of playing with uh, my partner there, Chris Clark. Uh, the yes. only advice I'm going to give Chris is you need to keep your day job because I don't think the professional golf tour is, is going to, for you, I don't think you're going to make it. Sorry to say that. No, definitely, definitely not. <laughs> but we all had a great time. Really, we appreciate it. And so at this time, I'd like to turn it over to Halls of Fame coach, Willie Jeffries. Thank you, coach. Thank you, Rob. Uh, it's great. It's so great to be here, and it's really great to have Coach Robinson. You know, when you're a defensive coordinator, uh, Buddy Pugh will tell you that's my – that's my deal, stopping them, like Coach Robinson does. Uh, he's got some pretty good athletes on that Gamecock team, too. One of them, one fellow so fast, he blocked the kickoff. But he's got <laughs> – he's doing such a great job, and we sure are happy he's here. Now, Chris, uh, uh, Rob, the, the tournament, uh, I think it was you, Chris, Harry Mims, and, uh, and another Clark guy. Who, who brought up all the mulligans. Good. And I'm happy you all finished. I'm happy the tournament was a success. Uh, and we're ready to give the money to our athletics director for Bulldog uh, Athletics. So now we have Chris Clark. Chris, I thought you told me, Chris told me he played golf the other day and that he was three over. He was three over, one over the swimming pool, one over the patio, and one over the house. Well, those, and, those don't and, count. And that was good shots. That was such a, he, <laughs> those were his better shots. <laughs> well, one thing about it, you, that's, what, that's, what one aunt, that's what one aunt told the other aunt, say, if you want to be safe, sit on the ball, because he's going to miss the ball. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I wouldn't advise that. Uh, Chris, Chris, we are so, you, you keep your day job because you do such a great job. And now we're going to ask you to come forward and, and, and tell us about players of the week and, and give us uh, uh, some information about uh, the high school football teams. Uh, let's us welcome Chris Clark, sports editor, Townsend Democrat newspaper. Thanks, Coach. Yeah, if, uh, if it takes me 17 holes to warm up my putter and make a long putt on 18, then I probably need to stick with this job. So I, I definitely appreciate that. But we did have a lot of fun. I'm glad we helped raise some money for the athletic department and the Bulldogs. So this is an important week for high school football play in the TND region. We've got skis and teams who are in the last week of the regular season, while high school league teams are finishing reg region play or they're already through with region play and they're uh, playing some non-region contests to get ready for playoffs. So even though it's been a kind of wacky schedule, they're playing through it, and uh, hopefully this rain won't put too much on us and they can have really good uh, conditions tomorrow night. So Bamberg Earhart has already wrapped up the Region 6A title, but they're going to look to prepare for Class A playoffs with a home game against Barmel. Arnold for Wilkinson, despite being shut out last week at home by Brooklyn Casey, they're going to host Class 4A May River, so that should be a good contest. Marshford Prep had a 55 to 13 home win against Northwood Academy last week. That secured second place in their region. And the Indians are going to finish the regular season with a non region game at Florence Christian tomorrow night. We've got a big one with uh, Branchville playing at Allendale Fairfax tomorrow night. Second place in Region 6A is up for grabs. So that's a big one right there. Edisto will be hosting Bethune Bowman for the Cougars' homecoming game. And Alvin County will host Free Spring Mineta. In region play, and that's also senior night for the Saints. So, also the matchup we've been waiting for all season is going to take place in Holly Hill. The two unbeaten teams in Skis Eight Man are going to take the field. Defending state champion Andrew Jackson Academy. Let's see, they haven't lost in two seasons now. Uh, they're going to play at Holly Hill Academy, who's also unbeaten. So, 
looking forward to that game. And uh, a lot of fans have been marking down the calendar for months now. So now let's recognize our players of the week. Our offensive player of the week, senior quarterback Seth Tyson led Calhoun Academy with 317 yards of total offense with two rushing touchdowns and two passing touchdowns in Friday's 33-6 win at Thomas Sumter Academy. Tyson rushed 14 times for 185 yards and touchdowns of four and 98 yards. He was also 9 of 14 passing for 132 yards and scoring strikes of 10 yards and 48 yards. CA will play host to Christian Academy of Myrtle Beach on Friday. So our ATI Physical Therapy Offensive Player of the Week for head coach Todd Layton and Cowan Academy, senior quarterback Seth Tyson. I know Coach Layton's watching, and Seth is actually in class out at Arnford Calhoun Tech. So he's doing his afternoon class out there, and he's not able to join us. But congratulations to Seth, and they're playing through a tough season, but they're playing hard every week and picking up wins when they can. So we really want to congratulate them. Now for our Defensive Player of the Week. Senior linebacker Isaiah Washington led Bamberg Earhart to its fourth shutout win this season with 16 tackles, including two tackles for a loss. In Friday's 28 to nothing non-region win at Great Falls, the Red Raiders are five and zero Region Six A champions, and as I mentioned, they will host Class Two A Barnwell tomorrow night. Our ATI Physical Therapy Defensive Player of the Week for head coach Robert Williams and Bamberg Earhart is senior linebacker Isaiah Washington. Isaiah, would you like to say a few words? Uh, I'm just thankful, and this is a great uh, opportunity to be recognized for being a Player of the Week. And I'm looking forward to playing tomorrow against Barnwell, and we preparing for the playoffs. Isaiah, is, is this the first time you've been our player okay, of the week? Okay, Isaiah, you don't you don't get a choice of the one thousand dollars of the shirt. We we gonna send you the shirt. Uh, we ran out of money. We you know we did one time we offered you one thousand uh, dollars either the player of the week uh, shirt, and you got to pick the one you wanted. So now we're picking for you. We're going to send you the shirt. And look, congratulations. You had a great, great ball game. Thank you. Okay. Is this the first time you, you want to say something else? Tell you, you want, yeah. Isaiah, is this it's the first true. time you've been our player of the week? No, sir. I didn't think so. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, he. I I remember the last time he was with us. He he wanted the one thousand dollars, but but we didn't have it right then. But but congratulations. Uh, now uh, uh, now we're gonna uh, bring up. Uh, we don't have. A, I don't guess Ms. Workman has a comeback player today. I don't think she does. No, so sir. if not, we're going to bring up uh, our own coach. He's going to talk about our Bulldogs, and then he's going to introduce our great speaker for today. So let's bring him up, our own coach, Coach Oliver Buddy Pugh. Thank you, Coach. Y'all hear me? I hope you do. Uh, okay. I'm, I'm glad to be yep. back. I was out running around last week camping and doing all kinds of stuff. I had a good time. Was that last week or week before? It's been such a long time, I can't keep up with exactly what's going on here. We've had a little bit of an issue. I guess you saw in the newspaper yesterday where one of our teams in our league, Bethune Cooper, opted out of the season uh, for this coming spring. And, uh, you know, we're having a little bit of a spike in the virus in general, and we have a little issue ourselves. So we've been shut down now for a couple of days, actually for the most of the week, and are not practicing. So, you know, hopefully we can figure out how to get everybody cleaned up and back on the field and, and practicing again. We want to try to get at least 10 practices in before we go home for Thanksgiving. We'll be going home for Thanksgiving around the end of uh, November. And uh, at that point, then we'll be coming back on the 1st of January, getting ready for uh, our season uh, this coming February 20th. Um, uh, it's been uh, a, a pretty tough deal getting going here. We've started going a little bit, had, had a couple practices. The next thing we know, we were out. So, you know, if we can ever get going and stay going, then maybe we can maybe make this thing consistently, you know, go good for a while. So 
Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing if we can get our butts back on the field. I'm tired of being here locked up in the office. This is crazy. All right. Now, uh, I've got Coach T-Rob, Coach Trevor and Robinson here today. Um, Coach Rob was a was a great player back in the day, and I got some of these Auburn. I got uh, Melvin Hines here and Stacey Danley, all these guys. I think I coached against you, Melvin, when I was in Columbia back some years ago when y'all came up and beat us. I had that Joseph boy playing quarterback, I think. I forgot exactly who it was, but we've been uh, uh, kind of uh, – back and forth. He comes down sometimes. He likes to come down and play a little golf sometimes, coach, down at, down at the club. This this guy's a, you know, one of them pretty guys, you know, yeah. that can hit a uh, yeah. so far yeah. until you can hardly see it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, he played DB yeah. at Auburn. They might have played for my buddy, Pat Dye. Yeah, I bet you. Yeah, they, all of them coach Dye. Buddy, I think they played, I think they played my the late, the former, yeah, the late coach. Coach Tubbyfield, all those guys were down around in there too, somewhere. But now he was a, uh, a defensive back. He was a safety and played in the league a little bit. Played, he was with the Falcons for a little while and the Buccaneers for a little while and went back with the Falcons. Ended up leaving and getting into the coaching game. And then he's been all over. He was, he was back at Auburn. They've seemed to like him at Auburn because they keep bringing him back down <laughs> there to do stuff. He was a GA there. He left and went to West Kentucky for a little while. He was at Southern Miss. He was at Florida with Coach Muschamp. So Coach Muschamp's had a connection with him, you know, a time or two. And then he comes back to Auburn for a year before he gets the defensive coordinator's job at South Carolina. We think he's one of the bright young football coaches in the country, and we're excited to have him here. Uh, Coach Robinson has family, his wife, uh, Mandisa, Man uh, Mandisa. I, she, I just go, she just go by Mandy, but it's Mandisa. <laughs> Is that right, Mandy? Okay, they got three kids. Uh, uh, Skyla, no, wait a minute, no, it's Tyson, Travis, and Jordan. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, you know he seems to be uh, enjoying himself up in Columbia. You know, trying to see if he can get them game cards going. We pulling for you, boy. So I appreciate uh, it. Keep, keep going, and uh, and you'll be all right. So without any further ado. I bring to you all Coach Traveris Robinson. What's going on, fellas? How y'all doing? <laughs> How you doing? Uh, hey, Rob, we got great, about great, five, we got three great. or 400 people out there on the touchdown club, so it's a couple more. But, yeah, guys, how y'all? Now, That's I'm awesome. Going. That's awesome. Well, I'm excited to speak to you guys. A um, little bit about me. Um, Buddy kind of hit a bunch of the stuff. Um, the one thing that I share with the players more than anything is the same people you, well, my grandfather used to tell me all the time. The same people you meet coming up, you're going to meet coming down. And uh, make sure you're taking care and you're handling your business the right way. Um, I think that's one of the, the most important things for a young player is to understand when they're in college, you know, they think that it's during that time that they can do what they want to do and they're trying to grow up. Well, you're going to meet some of these people that you're going to need jobs from one day. And I tell them all the time, if I would have went to Auburn and I was the guy that's missing class, skipping class, doing stuff that I didn't have any business doing, then they wouldn't give me an opportunity to come back and be a GA and be around the football team. And if that opportunity would have never presented itself, and I would have never, never had the opportunity to meet Coach Muschamp, who was the defensive coordinator at Auburn when I came back to school after I finished kind of playing in the NFL. And um, so that connection was a great connection for me, and it's still paying dividends in my life as we speak. Um, so those are the things that I talk to our players about often, about just how they're handling themselves, how they're going about their business. As far as for what's going on as far as South Carolina football right now, you know, a couple of things, you know, and Buddy kind of mentioned it, you know, what's going on in y'all program, and it's the same thing everywhere else around the country. Um, we're going through some of the same things, you know, guys practicing, a guy get a headache now, and he's missing practice. He's not coming back around until the tests come back. So it's a whole bunch of different protocols and different things. The contact tracing when a guy that's a roommate get it, his four roommates can't practice. So we had a lot of guys miss a lot of time doing training camp, which we all know is instrumental to a football team. Um, so right now, just trying to deal with all the different issues like that the best that we can. And I think our players have been doing a phenomenal job of doing their best of not trying to be around people that's not going through the same testing protocols that we're going through, which here at South Carolina, we're getting tested three times a week. We get tested every Sunday, every Tuesday, and every Thursday. Those tests normally come back the next morning um, when we get those tests back. And probably on average one, maybe two a week 
is what we've been getting, but the problem been coming in terms of the contact tracing, also getting their roommates out of there. And we had a couple of false positives where a guy had to actually miss games and then they got the test back after they tested back in three times and they were able to, to, to be, to, 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 to join the football team again. So, you know, just dealing with some of those things are, are, are probably the most trying and troubling things right now, but everyone else around the world is doing that as well. And that's something that we just got to do a good job with doing. Um, as far as the playing part of it, I think our guys are playing in the right way. One of the things that I went back to the drawing board for us is going back to just different of unit meetings, which you can't really do right now because of the Zoom meeting. So we're doing a lot of meetings on Zoom, and then we can't have the guys come in and have a defensive meeting where we have the entire defense in there. And I think that's been some of the issues of just some of the small mistakes in the game. You look at a play, a game for defense, and say we average 70 plays in the ball game, you know, you look at five plays that that don't go right, well, that's 35 points. On offense, if I was an offensive coach, which I had to do it over again, I'll go coach offense, all right? It's just second and 10, right? So it's a big difference as far as coaching defense and offense of paying attention to the details of your job and doing what you're supposed to do um, in the defense. Um, really excited about the opportunity to be here at South Carolina. Um, I met some several, several good people that I'll know throughout the rest of my life. Um, Coach Jeffries is a guy, you know, that I had a chance to meet, a guy who was the, one of the first, uh, the first black um, African-American um, football coaches. And um, he's someone that I inspire to be one day, a guy that's, that, that's been a, a joy in my life to get a chance to meet. I don't know if you know that because I don't get a chance to talk to him every single day. But when I do see him, I do really appreciate, you know, having you on here and, and being around you. Um, it's something that I inspire to be one day. And um, I appreciate the legacy that you have left for us. Um, other than that, you know, right now, it's a trying time in our world. Um, one of the things that, that we're doing here at South Carolina, um, we're taking our kids to vote on Tuesday. I think that's going to be a big deal for those guys. And it was one of the topics we're on our off week right now. So you got a lot of time that you can speak on stuff that don't have to do with the X's and O's. And um, one of the things that I that I was able to speak to our guys about, you know, today was about voting and not just voting, about knowing who you're voting for and not just the public, not just the presidency. I'm talking the local officials, the different things that they need to know about. And um, what I did was I had my wife. She kind of came up with some little cheat sheet for the guys and just show every candidate that's voting and just gave them a little background of some of their pro some of their policies, some of the things that they do, just so when they go to vote, they ain't just going to vote because we told them to vote. They go on to vote with a purpose, all right, with a plan. And um, I think that's very important. And I think, you know, it's more than football. And football, obviously, is why I'm here. Um, but I deal with the guys. We talk in terms of 12 or 14 ball games. Well, I deal with them 365 days. And I want them to be successful off the field just as well as I want them to be successful on the field. And um, I think that's one of the, the, the things that we're doing. Um, but do you have any questions? Do anyone have any questions for me? Anything that I can answer um, on our behalf as far as whatever Gamecock football, life, whatever the case may be, my journey to get to this point? Yeah, I got a couple of questions, Coach. Yeah, Coach. Um, yeah, we're going to – Rob Hibbets, Rob Hibbets first. I know it. Uh, what's your feeling regarding not being able to play Clemson this year? How's the team reacting to that? I'll tell you what, it's very troubling. Um, obviously, that's a rival that, that, that the guys look forward to. Um, we hadn't been very successful in that rival as of late, and um, we need to be. And I think that, you know, our guys, you know, every day, you know, we talk in terms of doing the offseason, the Clemson reps, you know, getting stronger, things like that. And I think, you know, for those guys, especially more so the South Carolina kids um, that, 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 that came to South Carolina with the hopes of playing Clemson every year, it's been, it's been trying. Um, but they understand the situation that we're in and um, they understand the, the, the problem that we have. And we look forward to renewing that, that rivalry next year. Second question. Um, if, Coach Robinson. Uh, if you're the commission of the NCAA and, uh, for example, Wisconsin came out of the guns playing pretty good last week and now they can't play this week. Um, do you think it's fair if they play four, five, six games that they would qualify for the playoffs? Um it doesn't sound like the right thing to do. Um, so, I, but I wouldn't say it's unfair or fair. I would say, I mean, that's just the way that the rule was written. And 
hey, it is what it is, and they just got to go with it. It's a crazy year. I mean, you look at the NBA, you look at the Major League Baseball, you talk in terms of 60 games as opposed to 162. You talk in terms of playing a bunch of games in the bubble. So everyone is getting adjusted to the new way of life or hopefully not the new way of life, hopefully more so just the, the new way this year. Um, so I can't wait to get back to normal, to doing things normal and going out and seeing people and going to restaurants and hanging with my family. But right now, with all the restrictions and all the things, we've just been playing it safe. Um, because, you know, you start talking with right now, we don't have our special team coordinator uh, guy. You know, we, it's people that's not around just because of certain things are going on. Their wife may have it or whatever the case may be. So it's just a little different right now. So just playing it by ear and just trying to do the best we can. Coach Robinson, I've got a question. we It's been um, pretty publicized how teams are having to cope with their current teams. What's changed for you on the recruiting trail? What kind of obstacles are you trying to overcome now? How is this completely different? And what kind of things are you doing to overcome those hurdles? Well, I think the first thing, um, you're signing kids that you've never seen before in person, um, which is very, very scary. Um, not seeing a kid in person because, you know, sometimes the tape, you know, you look at a corner, for instance, I'm recruiting corners, all right, and secondary guys. Well, in high school, Sometimes you don't even see, you can't even see those guys in the plate. They, they don't get a lot of work. All right. So now you're just going by looking at the numbers or, you know, you're looking at some of the, they went to a rivals camp. You're watching some stuff that don't have anything to do with tackling or with, with knowing a defense and, and, and being able to adjust and play real football. So I think that's been one of the trying issues that I think we've been having. It. Um, I think some of the things that we're doing to cope with it. Um, the other night we had a, um, a virtual official visit. And um, it was something that we just had video of our campus. All of us was on the video, just talking to each, you know, about each department, whether it was the academics, whether it was the nutrition, whether it was the dorms, just trying to be a little proactive in that regard and kind of think out of the box. And I think that's one of the things that I think our department, recruiting department has done a great job with, of just thinking outside of the box and trying to do something that somebody else is not doing. And um, but right now it, it's very trying. I feel bad for some of the high school players that's more late bloomers than anything. Because I mean, sometimes you know, you look at some of the guys. I mean, some of those guys don't start to to get into their own until their senior year. All right. So then now you know, just trying to find those kind of guys, which I think we have a bunch of those guys in South Carolina, um, and we're combing through all the recruiting tape and, and and all the games every week, trying to find those kind of guys that got some size and start late developing and grew a little bit or whatever the case may be. And we have some talented guys in our state and, and we need to find those guys. And like I tell, and coach Muschamp tell the staff, if we're going to miss, let's miss with South Carolina guys. And, um, and guys that, that, that love Carolina, that, that want to play here at South Carolina, grew up South Carolina fans. And um, if, if we're going to miss and not know, let's not know with our home people. We could coach. possibly branch out into uh, maybe in a year or two looking at junior colleges and smaller schools to make yeah. up for this. Yeah, I, I think that's that's always a plan. I mean, we're looking for the best players. Um, sometimes, you know, as far as the numbers, they don't fit sometimes with some of the junior college as far as trying to just have the right amount of sophomores, juniors, seniors. So sometimes it don't fit. But, you know, we're always looking for guys, especially dynamic pass rushers and cover corners and receivers and running backs. We always looking for those guys throughout the junior college ranks, and then even now without the tr with the transfer portal and with the, the the new legislation, meaning that they're gonna have guys that don't have to sit out that transfer. I and mean, we're always looking at, looking at those avenues as well. Coach, Coach Robinson, uh, you alluded to this. Has it been um, with not having fans in the Great. I couldn't hear it. It was two people speaking. Say it again. Um, how difficult has been for yeah, you? Yeah, I was first, but I yield to him. <laughs> we try again. This, this is this is this is eighth question. Go ahead, Coach Robinson. Who's in the show right now? Rob, let Coach go ahead so he can get going. Coach Jeffers, you're up now. Rob, you be quiet. <laughs> Thank you, Rob. Yeah, Rob, that was your that was your fifth or sixth question. Uh, <laughs> Coach Robinson, you alluded to something I'm happy you did. I'm happy you did about your journey. Uh, I hope that your next job will not be a horizontal move, that, that, that it'll be an upward one. And uh, 
something John Cooper told me a long time ago, the best job you've ever had in your life is the one you got, you have now, and you must treat it that way. But you know, it's not so much about the destination. It's about the journey, your journey that you travel. Can we hear a little bit about that? And uh, that's my only question. Yeah. Um, so my journey was, um, I'm originally from Miami, Florida. I played my college ball at Auburn. Um, you know what? It's crazy because I didn't play. I played a lot as a freshman and didn't play my sophomore and junior year much. I played a bunch of special teams, but I didn't help offensively or defensively. They moved me to defense, and I played safety my senior year and was an all-SEC player and um, and yeah. got a chance to go to the NFL and was a free agent for the Atlanta Falcons and went and made the team and um, started and, and played pretty good. I stayed there for two years, and I was at Tampa for another year. And then I tore my knee up and I went to college. I went back to get my degree. Um, I went back to get my degree and that's when I, Coach Tuberville was still the head coach and Coach Muschamp was the defensive coordinator. I was there for two years doing that. And then Coach Muschamp left and went to Texas and I took my first college coaching job at Western Kentucky. And um, it was the most amazing time because the defensive coordinator was the head coach and the, the facility was very small. So I had to meet my first position meeting that I ever had was in the head coach's office while he was sitting in the room doing notes on his defense and he was the defensive coordinator with a bunch of senior players. So preparation was key on how I prepared and I got there two days before spring practice started. So that night, those nights prior to meeting, I was up all night, very anxious, very nervous when I was teaching his material to a bunch of people that already knew the defense and I was learning the defense as, the, as we spoke. Um, but I thought that was a great time for me um, to do it that way. And it was a really success, really successful for me. Then I took the next job that following year, um, Coach Fedora was at Southern Miss and I went to Southern Miss um, to be the corners coach. I went and interviewed and um, he called me when I got back to the um, airport and asked me that I want a job. And I told him, yeah, I want the job. The pay was significantly different. So yeah, I wanted the job. So I went and I took that job and, you know, we, we were successful there. We had a really good year. And then coach Tuberville was the next coach at Texas Tech. And I went to Texas Tech with him um, for a year. And then coach Muschamp got the Florida job. And then I was at Florida for four years. And that was the first time that I was coaching superior athletes. And I think, you know, a lot of times people get the chance to, 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 to coach. And a lot of times, sometimes it happens too fast for them they go from a GA and they coaching at Clemson or South Carolina or whatever. I like the journey that I took because I learned how to coach bad players um, that wasn't so talented in the guys that we were suspected to be. And it taught me to, to pay attention to the fundamentals and the detail of your position and the eye control and the different things it takes to be successful. So when I got to Florida and I was coaching the superior athletes, and I had the Vernon Hargreaves of the world or the Keanu O'Neill's or the Matt Elam's, the first round players. Well, if those guys can play with the same eye discipline, the same technique as the guys that wasn't as talented, how good can they be? And I think that was the thing for me going from those places to the University of Florida where I had exceptional players um, was the technique and the fundamentals of the game. And then again, I was able to do that again at Auburn um, when I had Carlton Davis and Jamel Dean, who's now the two starting corners for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I had those guys on the same team and those guys was playing really good and um, was excited about them. Then I was a little nervous, you know, to be the defensive coordinator because as a back end guy, you always see things from the back end. Um, you worry about the coverage more so than you worry about the fits. And sitting in the meeting room, you know, the one thing that I tell young aspiring defensive coordinators or even head coaches, while you're in the meeting room, I think it's important that you learn how to do different things than one position. Um, and I think that's the most important thing that I think that I did, especially when I went to Auburn, you know, in spring ball, we started messing around that I will go out and meet with the linebackers for a little bit, or I'll go meet with the D line for a little bit. And I think that helped my nurturation of just understanding the entire scheme. So when I became a defensive coordinator, you know, your, your thinking got to be a little different as far as from a position coach, you got to think more big picture. And I think that's one of the things that helped me in my first process of being able to do this. And um, like you said, man, you worry about the job that you have. And if you do a good job at the job that you have, then you'll have other opportunities to do something else. And um, 
hopefully one day that will uh, uh, be afforded to me. But right now, just in the moment, worrying about what we're doing and how can we get better as a program. Thank you. Thank you. Go, go ahead, Rob. No, I'm not going to talk anymore. I'm not going to say anything else. I've asked too many questions. Oh, you're good, Rob. You asked about the fans. Um, I think that was unusual. I, I would say when we first got out there, it, it, it's, it's a little weird because it feels like you're in a scrimmage because um, you can't hear – you hear too much. You can hear the players on the field making adjustments, saying stuff wrong, so you're trying to correct them, all right? And, and it, 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 it's it's a little nerve-wracking, to be honest with you. Um, now, I think we're getting more used to it, um, teaching the kids how to be a self-starter, that they don't need the momentum of the crowd. Yes, it helps, and we understand that it changed the momentum of the game sometimes, but they need to do that on their own. They need to be able to be self-starters and then – from teammate to teammate, I think it's important to have some energy on the sideline and understand that, that that that's what we need to feed upon if it's anything that we need to feed upon. But yes, to answer your question, it was a little weird at first, um, but now I, it's kind of the norm right now. Thank you. Any other questions, anything that I can answer? Well, Coach Robinson, yeah. Uh, Coach Robinson, I'm, I'm so happy you alluded to the fact that sometimes once I had an offer to go to Brown University mm -hmm. and the athletics director just told me, he said, I don't know if you are accustomed to coaching these type of athletes. And you know what he meant. These mm -hmm. are guys uh, running backs, uh, running four, nine and five flat. And what he meant was exactly what you said. When, when you had those guys that you really had to work with technique and the fundamental fundamentals of the game. So when you got to Florida and you saw those extraordinary guys, if you applied that to them, they got even better. So I know Buddy had a couple of guys, he thought they were going to be all Americans, but uh, both of them missed the whole year. One had chapped lips, the other had a hangnail. So, so they didn't turn out so well. <laughs> But I'm so happy to, <laughs> I'm so happy you uh, uh, talked about the caliber, the caliber of athletes you coach. That was very interesting. Thank you, sir. Okay, now, well, that's it. Uh, if Rob doesn't have any more questions, uh, Buddy, Buddy didn't ask any today. I think Buddy is tired, but. Um, now, let's bring up the guy uh, who does uh, a lot of the work. He, he tells us what to do, and we go and do it with the Orangeburg Touchdown Club. Our president of the Orangeburg Touchdown Club, Rob Hibbets, take it away. Thank you, Coach Willie. Um, Coach Robinson, thank you so very much for taking your valuable time to meet with us today. I know your remarks came from your heart which you must success and anybody would be honored to be coached by you. And thanks again for your appearance today. And we wish you the best of luck the rest of the year and take care. Thank you Thanks. so much. Okay. Um, first of all, I want to congratulate Isaiah and Seth again. Uh, I figured Isaiah had been with us a couple of times. They, uh, Bamberg Earhart has a great team. I don't think they've been scored upon this year. I'm not sure, but they, they're doing a great job. We wish them continued Thanks. success. And um, hopefully uh, someday we'll be able to get the parents in so that we can thank the parents for what they do for these players and the coaches. So our speaker next week is Willie Simmons. He's the head coach of FAMU. And so we're looking forward to that. At this time, I'll ask Charles to put up the uh, Pick'em contest teams for this week, if you don't mind. Thank you. All right, so we've got Kansas State versus West Virginia. Oh, first I got to do the chestnut grill plug, so. Our Pick'em Contest, sponsored by Chestnut Grill. Go check them out. They just opened their new outdoor patio. I went last week. It was wonderful. Um, but this week, we got Kansas State versus West Virginia. 
We've got our team, our neighbors to the east, Coastal Carolina on a roll this year versus Georgia State. Um, we got UCF versus Houston, LSU versus Auburn, both teams looking to get their seasons back on track, and Virginia Tech versus Louisville. Uh, so that should be a, a, a gun show there. Um, and then our tiebreaker is going to be total points versus Boston College versus Clemson. Uh, should be pretty high, but we've got an email change. Um, please send all of your picks to andy-hunter0122 at gmail.com. So I'll keep this up for a few more seconds. We got Kansas State, West Virginia, Coastal versus Georgia State, UCF Houston, LSU Auburn, Vitek versus Louisville, and tiebreaker Boston College versus Clemson. So send those to Andy and we'll get back with you. Uh, next week. Thank you, Charles. Appreciate okay. it. Thank you. Very Go, Go ahead, Rob. Um, last week it was very tough. Uh, we had one participant that lost all five games, which is very hard for me to believe. Um, but we did have a winner in the tiebreaker. It was uh, Stephen Cook. And I think the Cook family has been eating at Chestnut Grill thanks to the touchdown club for the past month and a half. So, but they were the winner and congratulations to them. Uh, going forward, we got another great weekend of high school football and college football. Looking forward to that hurricane being out of the way and having some great playing. Um, thank you all for watching today. And we look forward to having you back again next Thursday. Y'all take care. Thank you.